Live Edge Slabs. One of the most popular forms of woodworking nowadays is working with Live Edge Slabs. Many professional woodworkers have centered their entire business just around working with Live Edge material. Live Edge Timber is in high demand in this country and if you're in the business of saw milling, you'll want to watch this video. Today right here at the kiln, and I'm going to do a video that kind of focuses on the business side of saw milling. And uh, before we get started, I appreciate you guys watching these past videos here. I've had a real good spike in uh, views on the last few videos we've done here at the sawmill. And I appreciate all the thumbs up and lights I've been getting on these videos. And the reason I ask for those lights on the videos is because YouTube will kind of focus on the videos with more lights and they'll kind of push those out a little bit more and uh, expose this channel to people who's not seen it before. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And it never fails, I'll get, I, I could care less if I get thumbs downs on these videos or, or uh, people that hit the dislike button. I'd get four or five every time I put a video out. Within the first 30 seconds of putting the video out, there's four or five people in this world that are sitting by their computer just waiting and they hit that dislike button. It's kind of funny, I think. It's kind of comical to me. I could actually put a video out and give out the winning lottery numbers for the upcoming drawing and people would still hit the dislike button, I think. But anyways, I could care less, so keep on hitting the dislike button and hit the like button if you enjoy it. So let's get on to today's video. Well, up on the sawhorse today, I got a slab of black walnut, live edge on one side right here. Eight quarter thickness, the width is about 14 inches, and I think this timber is about nine feet long. As you can see, this slab looks nothing like it did when it came off the sawmill last year. When you, when you run slabs through a kiln or just lumber in general, you get a lot of uh, ugly stains and a lot of build up here on the face of the board. And I'm not sure what causes that whole process to happen. I'm sure it has uh, everything to do with how the lumber is dried and, and just the process of kiln drying lumber. And my kiln is not the reason it does this. If you run slabs through any kiln, they're going to come out looking like this or lumber in general. So this is what you get. It looks terrible. You got stains all over it where the water has came out. You know, the color is not there like it was whenever we put it on the sawmill. And uh, when you have customers come over to look at slabs and you're, and you're in, the, in the business of selling wood, this is something you don't want to show to them right here. I'll bring those camera in a little bit closer as you guys can tell. It just looks horrible on the face of it here. You got these stains everywhere. You can tell it's walnut by the color, but you can't see the figure or the grain at all. And you can't really tell that there's a lot of defects in here. And what kind of character the wood has, it's really hard to even see the sap line here toward the bark. Now I'm going to show you guys a tool that you can use to make this look a whole lot better when customers come over to the mill. So here's a fast way I found to remedy that problem of these drying stains on this wood. So here's what y'all think about. Like we showed at the first of the video, live age slabs are just popularity is ridiculous. Everybody wants them. That's all I saw up here anymore is live age slabs. About 90% of my business is live age slabs. And to get your most money out of those, you gotta show people what they're buying. They can come over and they can look at these slabs with these drying stains all over them, but you're not gonna get your full value out of it. Cause they might pick out a slab of crotch figure and you're not even aware it's there. And you're really getting less on the board footage because you're not really seeing what's there either. And you can't price it accordingly. So I found a really good way of speeding up this process here of really just kind of uh, cleaning up the faces of these slabs. Now this process does not flatten them by no means. And there's a few options you have here when you think about cleaning up these slabs. If you have a wide enough jointer, you can clean these up easily on a jointer and even run the other side through a wide planer or a belt sander and get the same results here. But by doing it that way, you're also going to have it flattened. So you can also charge more money for that as well. I don't have a really wide jointer or planer here. If I was going to flatten these, I'd either have to use a router sled or hand planes. And when you're running a business like this, you can't really spend all day just using a hand plane flattening one or two slabs, even though I enjoy hand tools and love using them. It's really not practical here when you're pulling out 600 to 1,000 board feet at a time out of a kiln like this. You can't really spend one day just flattening two or three slabs. I found another way to kind of clean these faces up here. And I want to say this also, I see people all the time, and I've done it myself in the past, they'll advertise live edge slabs for sale on Craigslist or, or wherever, and this is how they look. And uh, by doing this process here, that just takes a couple of minutes. And I wouldn't recommend doing this process on one inch lumber, 
but anytime you're dealing with eight quarter slabs or 10 quarter slabs or anything live edge or mantle pieces and a lot of your thicker stock like that, this is a really fast way to clean up one face of the slab. And you don't have to do both sides of it. You can just do one face and give the customer an idea of what they're buying. Because I felt in my experiences over the past seven years selling slabs, most people that I sell them to want to do the flattening process themselves. They like buying the raw lumber and really just turning it into what they want to do with it. Very rarely do I get people requesting if I can flatten the slabs for them. It rarely happens. And it's something I don't even offer here because it's too time consuming. I usually just point them in the direction of a large uh, mill workshop who has a CNC machine who can flatten them pretty fast for them. And also, this is no paid endorsement. The company that makes this tool is not giving me any money to do this and didn't ask me to do it. I'm kind of just trying to give you guys an idea of something I found that might make you more profitable if you're looking to get into this business or if you're in it already. And I just started using this tool last week, actually. I acquired it at the end of December didn't have a chance to use it up until last week but man it has been a game changer here and it's just ridiculous how good of a job it does and i wish i'd have found out about it a long time ago if you're interested in it you can click on the link below i'll leave a link to amazon that's where i got mine from and you can read more about a lot of the specifications of it and read other user reviews if you're interested in it so let's get on with it here and take a look at it and put it to use well, all right, here's the tool I'm talking about. This is the Fest Tool RAS, and some people call it the Roz Rotary Sander. And this thing is ridiculous. It is like a grinder that takes sandpaper, pretty much. I've never had a, a sander this strong before, this powerful. As you can see, it's made by Fest Tool. You get these real nice uh, sustainers, they call them, or carrying cases that come with them. Of course, you know when you see Fest Tool, you know it ain't cheap. But it's really well made like all their products are i'm a i'm a huge fan of fest tool i got the domino and the trat saw and the router i got several of their tools and this just adds to the arsenal but this thing right here is a beast of a sander and it really does a great job of cleaning up these slabs these sanders use these little orbital pads they're four and a half inches diameter and they just stick right on and they're not like your regular uh, palm sanders, like your DeWalt or stuff like that. There's no holes in here. There's no hook and loop system. So you don't lose any of your surface area here to sand with. It's just solid, stitch right on there. And you can also hook this up to a dust collection system. And I tried that already through the Festool dust extractor, but it really just works up so much dust, it fills the bag up so fast, it's not real feasible. So I've been doing this outside. And you'll see here in a minute when we get it going, it shoots dust everywhere because it's so powerful. And this thing does have variable speed control in the back one through six. I usually run it on five or six. Now this sander is extremely powerful. If you're not careful, you'll dig a hole right through the wood. If you get on these edges here and just put a little bit of pressure, you'll start shaping the edge of this wood. I've seen people on YouTube also use these sanders to sculpt out and shape uh, chair seats with them because they're so powerful. You can just remove a lot of wood really fast with them. And you guys will see here in just a minute how fast and effective this tool is. In about two minutes, I'll be able to effectively clean up this entire nine foot long slab and make it look like it just came off the sawmill. Now I won't sand both sides of this slab, it's really not necessary. I try to pick the best face that I can see through these stains and sand that one. And that would give the customer the best overall picture of how this slab's gonna look once it's finished. So no need to do both sides, just do one of them. You can do both sides if you want to, but it's really not necessary. One side is plenty for them to see what kind of color and what kind of grain the wood has. see that was in real time just a few seconds 
and you're going to have some swirl marks left over from the sander, but that's no big deal. This is going to be sanded and planed out later by whoever buys it and finished. And they're not going to care about those swirl marks because they're going to be able to see this grain and this color. It looks so much better presenting wood like this to a customer than wood it looks like this right here on the end with those stains. That's just fantastic. It brings back the color again and makes it so much more marketable when you're trying to sell slabs like this. And it's also like having Christmas for the second time on this same log. I always talk about Christmas whenever we open up these logs. And uh, this is kind of like Christmas for a second time because sometimes you open these things up and you kind of remember the way they looked when you saw them because you forget about a lot of them because they're air drying for so long. Some fantastic color here in this Tennessee black walnut. A little bit of sap here on the end, not very much at all. And some really nice purple and brown colors in here toward the heartwood. Some fantastic stuff. So we get the camera turned around here and we'll do this entire slab and see how it looks. Love will surround you, my dear In the autumn or spring In up New York or here No matter how cold a distance Some days may appear Just know love's all around you, my dear And memories will fade away the rainstorms in April might last until May. So your head will grow tight in your love this night. The love that surrounds you. Have trouble falling asleep. In about four minutes per slab and they're done, you get this nice face here to show to your customers. Because you think about it, when you're selling your lumber, your slabs, if you sell them from your sawmill, your wood shop, from your house, from a farmer's market, wherever you're selling them from, this right here is the best way to go. When they pull onto your property and see your stuff that's for sale, this right here really stands out. When you got slabs faced like this and the grain and the color showing, it really, you know, you can't beat that. Because the other guys are doing this when people pull on their lots. They're showing off this terrible surface here that's got the kiln drying stains and everything else that goes with it. And you don't want that. And you're really going to see your revenue increase when you start surfacing these slabs and get them ready. And they're not flattened by no means, like I said before. They're just really rough sanded to show the grain and the color. You know, think about that. When you pull on somebody's property and you're going to buy some wood, what do you want to see? The nice ones that show the grain are this terrible looking one with the, with the kiln stains on it. Anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful for you people in the sawmill business or you people thinking about getting into it. There's a lot of cost up front. There's a lot of tools you need. And most of those tools are expensive, just like this fist hole sander. But you gotta have that stuff if you wanna be profitable in this business because it's really getting flooded by the sawmills out there nowadays. Wood misers cranking them out and they're selling lots of them. Timber King, Norwood, they're selling them every day and there's gonna be a lot of people out there in the market selling timber in the next few years because woodworking, the popularity of it is through the roof nowadays. I mean, everybody and their brother is really doing woodworking now. If you go on Instagram, which is the most popular uh, social media platform for woodworkers, I think, you'll get on there and search for hand tools or woodworking or sawmill, and you'll see it flooded with posts of people getting into the craft and people has been in it for a long time. So really there's a good output there for your product. There's plenty of people doing this, but you want to stand out. By standing out, 
you get your slabs ready and get them surfaced on one side and get them ready to go. Now, up until about a month ago, until I bought this tool, I didn't even do this whole process I'm showing you today. If I had a slab I thought was really unique, I would either take my hand planes to it, which took all day long most of the time, or at least half a day to scrub off the top of it with a scrub plane or a jack plane, or I put it on my wood miser and I take off about a sixteenth or an eighth inch of material to reveal the grain, and I never had a process that was this fast. I don't have a wide enough planer to handle slabs like this. I don't have a belt sander either. And taking it to a mill shop is just really out of the question because you're going to be paying them by the hour to clean your slabs up. So for a few hundred dollars, this tool is just paid for itself, like I said with the first slab I sold. And every slab that comes out of my kiln is going to be getting the same treatment here, no matter if I'm taking it to a store to sell, if I'm selling it for my home, or if I'm selling it at the woodworking shows or a woodworking store. I'm going to start cleaning up every face because, you know, it just takes a few minutes. And in the long run, you're going to see that money return to you. Some really nice stuff and, and the only downside of this I can think of is I don't want to get rid of it I hate seeing the stuff go now because it reminds me of the times that come off the sawmill and how pretty it looked when I sawed it and it's kind of hard to let go of them when you see that grain pop out again because I'm a wood hoarder also I love wood and I hate seeing it leave but you got to sell it to be profitable and keep the whole cycle moving so hit the thumbs up button guys if you enjoyed this and uh, we got sawmilling coming up tomorrow. And the Buckeye tree is going to be on hold for a few more days. We've had some terrible weather lately. We've had a lot of rain and snow. And the wind's been really bad, except for today, actually. It's been a really good day for videoing. But anyways, the Buckeye tree is right beside some power lines. And I want a good day with the ideal conditions. That way that thing doesn't try to go the wrong way on me and knock the power out. And uh, so tomorrow, like I said, sawmill on Wednesday, going to be taking down some cherry trees. Some nice cherry trees and with that. Also got another tool review to do this week. And uh, it's got to do with cutting firewood. I got another new tool on the way. I'm not sure when it's going to be here. And uh, what else we got going on? More saw milling and more logging, I guess. That's about it. That's enough. What more do you want? Anyways, guys, thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Got some good stuff coming, like I said, this spring. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow sawing up some more white oak and sawing some walnut tomorrow also. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, if this was very useful to you, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this. And uh, if you have any questions at all about that sander, like I said, there's a link down below to Amazon where I got it with all the specifications on it and the price. So thanks for watching.